To some of you, good morning, other good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. This is John Samurai uh, from Gay People's Development Program, and I'll be making uh, this presentation on how communities are using uh, bylaws to secure community land rights. My presentation uh, will focus majorly on the issues faced by the community, uh, which inform the process of bylaws making. I will also look at what do we, uh, the community, aim to achieve uh, with the bylaws, and uh, also uh, look at what are the features or how do these bylaws look like. And welcome. Uh, so to begin with the issues, uh, for those who have uh, read a bit, a little bit about the geeks, these are an indigenous forest community. You can see from the map, uh, they live in uh, the forest, and they have challenges that come from their living the forest. Remember, the forests are national forests, they're protected area. That means the community doesn't have uh, tenure rights. They don't have title, and every time they are moved out uh, because of the uh, creation of uh, national parks and conservation area. So that is one of the challenges the community are facing. Another one is uh, their habitat, which they consider home, uh, is facing threats of destruction and degradation uh, every now and then from logging and uh, population encroachment. Uh, another serious issue is on land grab. Because where they are living, uh, they don't have titles, and uh, they are victims of grab from elite and political class. Remember also, when the Ogeku are facing the rest of eviction, they went to court, local courts, and uh, they have a court now at the African court, seeking, uh, challenging their eviction and seeking restitution of their land, which is in Mao Forest. Uh, the bylaws of the community are drafting are aiming to achieve a number of issues. One of them is uh, seeking to protect their uh, collective rights as a community. Remember, they have they are indigenous people. They have common rights. Uh, and that's what they want to protect. Another one uh, is to empower the community uh, lead and to strengthen the leadership and bring about the aspect of accountability on management of land and resources. The women and minority issues have to be looked into by the by, by the bios, where the widows and orphans we shall be protected. Uh, with the issues of court cases, the bio process is an um, a form of gathering more additional information and facts to strengthen their advocacy on land rights. Also, uh, bylaws is a critical aspect that will guide uh, documentation of their land claims, a uh, process which will uh, ease uh, the process of uh, registration of their community land. Uh, the bylaw also has an important uh, aspect of unite, bringing together the community and uniting them towards a common goal and prosperity. And most of all, uh, preserving uh, the community identity, culture, and traditional knowledge. I'll be looking now at the features of the bylaws. And, uh, they have the bylaws that we have facilitated uh, the community to develop. They have three major uh, sections uh, that is on gov rules on governance, rules on management of uh, land and natural resources, and social rules. And we'll begin with the rules on governance. And uh, those are rules that define the uh, governance structure, decision making, uh, levels, uh, definition of a community, and uh, processes that direct um, how decisions are made, which shape, shape the community. And here we 
the community uh, defines themselves. And I'll be giving an example of some of the bylaws the community have been able to develop. One on community definition, one of the community here, which is uh, Simone, uh, agrees that uh, members of the community are either by birth or belonging to a clan, marriage, or acceptance into the community. Uh, another sub categories on decision making, uh, another community here is Koibate says that uh, demand that real leaders have to report to the community after three months. And on land holding, uh, we see uh, the bylaws are proposing uh, women's rights, ensuring that they can own land, inherit, and uh, being part of uh, community decision making structure. On rules on management of community resources, uh, here are aspects uh, like food, water, and uh, access to grazing fields, uh, use of uh, natural resources are looked into, and uh, you can see a number of examples of rules, uh, no wasting, or no pouring of food, and you can see uh, a repercussion, if that is done, there might be a drought in future, uh, no downfilling of also to prevent the pollution of the rivers. And in grazing fields, you see no taking of sick animals to the, uh, to the communal grazing field. Uh, this is there to curb the spread of diseases and to care for the environment. Uh, there is the aspect of the nation that these are grazing areas, these are farming uh, areas, and uh, there are instructions to be followed uh, there. Also, the issue of uh, dispute uh, resolution and negotiations, uh, seeking benefits from investment the government, are things that are addressed by the community bylaws, focusing on the future development. On social rules, uh, these are rules that have the aspect of uniting the community and their relationship among themselves and to work um, with their neighbors. Uh, some of examples of the rules here, for instance, in one of the communities that is Samoani, they say that all adults are, are responsible for passing knowledge, educating the children about do's and don'ts. Uh, some other rule here, you can see uh, the neighbors are respected and on the shared resources, because there are common resources also that neighbors have to come in, they, are, they have to be shared on mutual agreements. And for the investors, they investors have to uh, seek free uh, in free prior informed consent with the community before initiating any kind of project failure to which the project is uh, subject to resistance or rejection by the community uh, on some rules there are rules of forgiveness uh, some remedy being placing uh, even the judicial system have been going through also dowry. Those are just examples of the rules that have been developed by the community. Uh, in our work, uh, we have been able to facilitate three communities uh, develop their bylaws, and we have been able to face a number of challenges as I shall be presenting here. One of the challenges that uh, the community is uh, dispersed, scattered across uh, an expansive forest. And uh, this brings out the challenge of mobilization and their participation. And because of that nature, to be able to address this problem, we have to facilitate very uh, village level meetings and rotational meetings to ensure that we are able to reach out to them. Uh, again, with this pilot program of uh, facilitating uh, community 
land documentation bylaws, the community are having a lot of high expectation from us. Uh, I'm hoping that we're going to address every aspect of their problem. And uh, with high expectation, we have to talk to the community, help them understand that we are just giving them technical support and they have a bigger role to play in their advocacy for their rights. Uh, again here, this project currently is managed by a few staffs. That means there's a lot of work. However, we have been able to get the support of the community, volunteers, and also we have um, people we call community mobilize, land mobilizers uh, who support us in this work, who may have been empowering to support us. Uh, there is also uh, the issue, the community have to be updated on every trend that is happening in the, in the nation. Of late, they have uh, a lot of legislations on land going on, and uh, when the laws are in, in raw form like bills, we have to track until they are laws. So we have to keep on informing the community of every happening, and that means doing a lot of analysis and going back to the community and uh, educating them. Here is uh, an expertise that is required. Sometimes we lack, though we, we use friends and experts who are able to help us in that. Again, uh, projects will also have uh, individuals uh, who have their selfish uh, interest making and with potential to to have the pro program to demobilize the community with their selfish interest. And those are key people, but we cannot avoid them, them because they form part of the community and to be able to successfully uh, run the project, we have to talk to them, uh, make them understand the process, the process for the community, and they also need to support the course as some of what we have been going through. This program has been, uh, is using the community land protection approach. Thank you for, for listening.